want to welcome you to our online service this week from Solid Rock Drogheda. We do have services at uh, 10 a.m. and at 12 noon, and you're welcome to join us for them. But you know what? Every, every week, there's uh, hundreds of people who choose to join our online service as well. Sometimes it's people who couldn't make the service uh, for, because of work, because of illness. We have people join us from different parts of the world. Uh, we also have people who were in our in-person services but still check out the online service because they just maybe want to hear something again or check up on something that caught their attention, particularly uh, during the preaching or, or whatever it might be. So welcome to this online service. We'd invite you to worship with us. We're going to have a time of worship. We're going to have a special video. We're going to have a special song. And today we've got uh, a message from Seamus Burke, one of our other pastors. I'm off today preaching at another one of our churches, which is uh, the Voice of Hope Church of God in Balbriggan, County Dublin. And so Seamus is bringing the Word of God in Drogheda this Sunday. So I pray you'll be blessed through the preaching of the Word through Seamus Burke.
done for me. Let's sing again. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King. Let's sing again. Worthy. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain.
Hello again, Seamus here from Solid Rock. I want to welcome you to our Sunday service. Over the last few weeks, we've been pursuing the theme which we have for this year in church. This is my story. And it's basically telling others our story of salvation and our walk with the Lord and why that's important. And just a quick recap over the last few weeks, we've looked at how. Each one of us is the world expert in our own story and how the Lord has stepped in and interacted with us and changed our lives. It's really a story worth telling and for many people it's far more interesting than hearing something that happened many many years ago. We have an immediacy and we have personal experience of what God has done for us and when we tell people those stories it actually has a huge impact. And many people can identify with the challenges and the breakthroughs that we've had and give them hope that they can experience similar. Um, two weeks ago, David shared a challenging message. Um, all of our messages are available on our Facebook page, YouTube and our web page. We'd encourage you to go there and check them out. But a quick recap on what David said, he gave us three points and I'm going to summarize them. He basically said, break out of your comfort zone. Break out of your clique and reach out to others. Um, welcome them into your life and allow them to see what God is doing. And he basically said, it's like getting a new pair of shoes and breaking them in. It may be a little bit uncomfortable, but when you do it, you'll find that it's going to be really worthwhile. And he went on the second point. He said, share the gospel and tell your story, but also listen to what those people you're interacting with have to say, hear their story. Because very often in listening and being heard, it actually has a huge impact in the lives of others. So if we care enough to listen and to hear, oftentimes that opens the door to share hope. And finally, he said, care for the broken world that's beyond the doors of our church, the walls of our church. Have a sense of social justice and a desire to, to really impact and interact with society in a way that brings the gospel message into the marketplace. And then last week, Nick spoke about our persistence and consistency in our Christian walk. He gave a number of examples. I won't go into those. Check them out for yourself on the, on the various um, forums where we're alive. And... Basically, he said, how we live has an amazing impact on those around us. We may never actually fully comprehend what our legacy is. In fact, sometimes we may despair that we've made any impact at all. But if we live consistently for the Lord, we will have an impact and we will have a heritage. And he went on to say, there's five areas in which we can do this effectively every day. And that is in worshipping the Lord, being people of worship and joy and having that attitude of gratitude for what God has done for us, to be constantly in prayer, pray for ourselves, our families, our communities, for those around us, have that attitude of prayer. And when we do so, it transforms the way we see people and the way we act in situations. But also, as we pray, the Lord changes and impacts our lives for the better. Um, we also, he encouraged us to build meaningful relationships not just superficial ones, but meaningful ones. Um, and a very important one is to invest in young people and in the generations that are coming up around us. Pass on what we've received. Make sure they understand and comprehend what's going on in the Christian walk. And enable them to go further and higher than we've ever gone. And finally, to share the blessings we've received. Tell others about our blessings and share those blessings. I think that was a great start to the year and how to tell our stories. But this morning, I want to challenge you 
a little bit. I'm basically challenging you about why you should tell your story. Why should you tell it? What's the reason for this? And how can, how can you do that? And what impact can you have? And I want you to look at it with me with the view that your environment is your assignment. I'm going to repeat that. Your environment is your assignment. So I want to share the importance of telling our story, as I've said. Those of us who have encountered Jesus and who have recognized the need for his salvation, his forgiveness, his restoration of the things that were lost and broken in our lives, our reconciliation with him, our right standing with God. Those of us who understand and have experienced that, we have an amazing story to tell. You see, most people have no clue. They have no idea about life, eternal life, about God. It's not that they don't care, but simply apathy is set in for many people. Uh, the busy lives we live, the various challenges that come up, just surviving, work, um, raising children, all of those demands that are on us, they can take over. And for many people, they never actually take time to think about God or to think about eternal life. Oh, many live for the weekend or for the next holiday, the special event, the night out, the match, the wedding. Maybe it's Christmas they're looking forward to or the annual holiday. Perhaps it's finishing exams, graduating from college, getting a job, all of those things, promotions, getting a new car. These become the focus, raising kids, all of those milestones that we seek to achieve. And very often in the busyness of that, we forget about God altogether. So preoccupation can put us in jeopardy of missing out on the most important thing. And most people have no realization that there is such thing as eternal life. You might say, is this a new thing? And the reality is, no, it was ever so. And we find that out in the book of Matthew in chapter 24, 37 to 39, it tells us, as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating, they were drinking, they were marrying, they were given in marriage, up to the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them away. That's how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. So as you see, in the days of Noah, before the flood, this is how people lived. And not a lot has changed for many people. We just carry on as if there was never going to be a day, there was never going to be any concept of the return of the Messiah, any concept of a day of judgment or a day of reward. Just blissfully ignorant. But we have an assignment. We have an assignment to bring the good news. The good news that Jesus has paid for all our sin and made a way for us to spend eternity with him and with his Father in heaven. And Romans chapter 6 verse 23 tells us that the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Wages is something you're paid for what you've done. And here we're hearing that the wages of sin or living a life that is contrary to the will of God results in death. But that's not where it ends. The good news is he's made a way and we've got to tell people that way. And Romans chapter 10 tells us that Jesus paid the price for our forgiveness. And verse 9 to 13 says, If you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved, for it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, as with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. As scripture says, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame, for there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call upon him. For everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. That's the good news. Everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. But it goes on in this chapter in verse 14 and 15 of Romans 10. How then can they call upon the one they've not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear 
without somebody preaching to them. And how can anyone preach unless they're sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. So what's this scripture telling us? It's telling us there is salvation for all who call upon the name of the Lord, for all who profess him as Lord and Saviour. But unless they hear this, how will they ever know? Unless somebody tells them, they'll be totally unaware of this. And how many, how many people do we meet each day, each week, who don't know, and we don't tell them? So there's a challenge here for us. Your environment is your assignment. So who should tell them? I, I posit that you are authorised and commissioned to do so. And Matthew's Gospel in chapter 28, verse 16 to 20, sets this out. It says, Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And surely I'm with you always, even till the end of the age. So what do we see here? This is the final words of Jesus before he ascended to heaven. He's meeting with the disciples on the mountain. They came and worshipped him. But some of them doubted. They were like you and me. They weren't quite sure. Is, is, does this apply to me? Uh, have I got this authority? What am I supposed to do? Jesus sets it out very clearly. He says, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Now I am sending you. Go and do what I've said you have to do. Preach the good news. Baptize them, teach them to obey everything I've commanded you. And his promise, I will be with you always till the very end of the age. He doesn't leave us. He accompanies us in the power of the Holy Spirit to spread the good news abroad to everyone who will listen. And not only that, he, he is commanding us to do it. So if we go to Mark's Gospel, chapter 16, 15 to 18, we read, he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, you will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes with their hands. And when they drink deadly poison, they will not hurt them at all. They will place their hands on sick people and they will get well. You know, when somebody says something twice, we need to take, we need to take particular emphasis and, 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 and cognizance out. So Jesus is saying, get out there and do it and I'm going to be with you and you're going to see these signs following you. So he doesn't abandon us to do this. He enables us to do it and he goes with us as we do it. You see, we have the message of eternal life. It's not because of anything good we've necessarily done ourselves. It is because of the grace of God. He has given us grace upon grace. He has forgiven us. He has equipped us. He has made us righteous. And he has given us the ability and the, the authority to go and do what he did. You see, without authority, you cannot do things. You have no place. You have no standing. But we have authority. Now, in a past uh, incarnation, I was a policeman. I worked as a guard and a guard sergeant around um, the area in which I was based in, in, in County Loud and County Meath. But if I stayed in bed all day, the authority that the state had given me would have been pointless. You see, authority without action is of no value. When we have authority, we must use it for the purpose for which it's given to us. And the purpose we have authority is to heal, to drive out demons, but also to preach the good news and to enable people to comprehend and understand what Jesus has done for them. And the second Corinthians chapter five, verse 14 and 15 tells us, for Christ's love 
compels us, compels us, because we are convinced that one died for all, and therefore all died, and he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. That's us he's talking about. He's saying that we're convinced that one died for all, therefore all died. So we died with Jesus, we were raised with him, but because of that, we don't live for ourselves anymore. We live for him and we have a job to do for him. And he enables us to do it. This is not in any way connected to our salvation. Our salvation is not of works. But because Jesus has done so much for us, we gladly do what he's asked us to do. And this scripture goes on to say, Therefore, if anyone's in Christ, the new creation has come, the old is gone, the new is here. All this is from God, who reconciles to himself through Christ, and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Reconciliation, making people right with God. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ and not counting people's sins against them. Isn't that great news? There is an opportunity for people to be forgiven and fully healed and made righteous with God. But how will they know this unless somebody tells them? And this is where the next verse comes in. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin, that being Jesus, to be sin for us. So Jesus became sin for us. So that in him we might become the righteousness of God. What we're reading here is a transaction. Jesus took upon himself all the sin of the world. All. So if you're listening to this today and wondering, has he done something for me? Am I counted? All means all. Doesn't matter what nationality you are, doesn't matter what age you are, doesn't matter whether you're male or female, it doesn't matter whether you're young or old, doesn't matter what nationality or what religion you may have. If you come to Jesus and if you confess your sin, in other words, you recognize that you've lived in a manner which falls short of God's best for you, and if you come to Jesus and ask him to forgive you, and to give you instead righteousness, which means right standing with God, and ask him to forgive your sin. He does exactly that. No ambiguity. He does exactly that. So he's saying, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. But here's the, here's the challenge for those of us who know. Unless somebody tells, unless somebody brings the good news and explains it, and maybe shares a story of what God has done for them. Makes it real. Makes it possible for them to believe that maybe in spite of all I've done, there's hope. If we do that, many, many, many people are going to come to salvation. Many people. And that is our purpose. You see... In this scripture, we've heard that we are Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. An ambassador represents the nation or the king or the ruler who has sent him. And the ambassador's assignment is to a particular place and a particular people to bring a particular message. The ambassador does not bring his own thoughts and his own understandings he actually represents to the best of his or her ability the one who has sent him and relays their desire to those with whom he has been sent to interact i'm using the word he in a generic sense here many ambassadors female and do a wonderful job 
The point I'm making is we are ambassadors. Whether we're male or female is of no consequence, as I've said already. We are God's ambassadors to bring the good news of reconciliation and salvation to a hurting, lost world and to bring hope to those we meet. And we have been empowered, we have been given authority, and we have the assignment to influence the environment and those we interact with on a daily basis. Now, many of us work in a variety of different situations. Many of us are at college, many of us are in school, many of us are working, some of us are retired, some maybe are in their twilight years. And that's okay, because we, while we have a voice and while we are alive, we can be ambassadors for Christ, and we're being called to that. So our loyalty is being challenged today. Our loyalty to the King of Kings. Are we willing to be the ambassador he's called us to be? You know, as we tell our story, we're actually telling his story. If he has changed our lives, which he has for anyone who has put their trust in Jesus. So I'm encouraging you today to recognize you are an ambassador. You have a message. You can bring good news of salvation to those you meet on a daily basis or in any circumstance. And the Word of God tells us to be ready in all circumstances to share the hope we have, to share the beauty of what Jesus has done for us. So your assignment today is to dare to believe that you can be an ambassador for the Lord Jesus. Your assignment is to open your mouth and tell your story and explain what Jesus has done for you and do it in a way that represents him well as a good ambassador. And if you do, you will change the lives of those around you. Because when you live an authentic life of joy and peace in the Lord, it's very attractive. And it's not a hard sell because most people are blissfully unaware that there is a moment, there is a time when we all will stand before the Lord. And his desire is that we come clothed in the righteousness that comes from Jesus. His desire is that all would come to the knowledge of truth, that all would bow the knee to Jesus, and that all would be saved. And we have an opportunity to play a role in ensuring that those we meet and those we encounter will encounter an ambassador for the Lord. Your environment is your assignment. Do well. I pray today that you will understand that there are no passengers in Christ's army. We're all together with an assignment, with the ability to win many and to save many with the words of truth and the words of salvation that we have received. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. Thank you to Seamus for bringing that word to us. Uh, let me just share a few notices with you. We do have a prayer meeting tomorrow night at uh, 8 p.m. 8 p.m. until 9 p.m. It's our hour of power. Uh, we don't have a sermon. Uh, we don't do tea and coffee anymore. It's just one hour of worshipping God, coming into his presence and pouring out our hearts, seeking his face in prayer. So that's tomorrow night at uh, 8 p.m. We do also, of course, have our services in person every Sunday at 10 a.m. and at 12 noon. Now, also, we do have a whole load of online stuff. We, we have stuff every day online, and you can check that out. There's a daily devotional Monday to Saturday called Take Five. Uh, there's a Wednesday night Bible study upon this rock. We're going through Mark's gospel verse by verse. And we also have a daily one-minute prayer uh, for Ukraine that goes out. Uh, you can check all of that out on our our website www.solidrock.ie or our Facebook channel Solid Rock Drogheda or our YouTube channel Solid Rock Drogheda.
Uh, also, we are continuing with our 24-7 prayer. We are praying round the clock and uh, we'd love you to be a part of this. It's very easy. There's a link on our website, on our Facebook page. You go, you click on the link, takes you onto an online rotor and you can sign up for an hour. And if somebody else's name is there, that's fine. We've got different people in different places praying at the same time. That's even better. So uh, I'd invite you to try just putting your name down for an hour slot and see what God does in your life as a result. And uh, also I want to thank everybody for the giving to the church. Most people give online and we've got the IBAN and the BIC and all that up on the screen. And uh, also you can give by PayPal as well. There's a PayPal link on our website. Or if you want to come to our in-person services, there are, we don't have an offering basket around, but there are boxes on the back walls beside each exit. And you can put your tithe or your offering in an envelope and pop it in there. But whatever way you choose to give, thank you for your faithfulness in the matter of giving and receiving. And now we're just going to close the service by saying the grace together. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. And surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. <laughs>